Many people confuse the terms cement and concrete. Cement is a fine gray powder that's used to make concrete. It's also an ingredient in the mortar that masons use to lay brick and stone. Cement also goes into soil cement, a material that's used in paving roads, building dams, and lining reservoirs. The action begins at the limestone quarry. The limestone near the surface has a high content of the minerals silica, iron, and aluminum oxide. Deeper down, the limestone is more pure, containing less of those minerals and more calcium carbonate. The plant uses both types of rock, altering the proportions to make different types of cement. Workers drill holes in the rock wall in which they plant powerful explosives. For safety, the workers have to position themselves behind the area they're blasting, maintaining a distance of at least 50 meters. After the explosion, loaders move in. They transfer the limestone rocks to 50-ton capacity dump trucks. The trucks then haul their cargo to the cement plant nearby. At the plant, the trucks dump the rocks into what's called the primary crusher. The rocks can be as big as a piano. The primary crusher reduces them to about the size of softballs. There's a constant spray of water to keep the dust from billowing up and settling on the chutes. From there, a conveyor transports the rocks to the secondary crusher. It reduces them further to about the size of golf balls. Rock high in calcium carbonate and rock low in calcium carbonate are crushed separately. Now it's time to mix the two. The ratio varies according to the type of cement they're making. This overhead machine called a tripper makes piles of the required proportions. They call this the raw mix. Then, a reclaimer loads the raw mix into a grinding machine called a roller mill. Depending on what minerals are already naturally in the crushed rock, the factory adds extra minerals, such as silica and iron. Certain types of cement also require aluminum oxide. The roller mixes and grinds the ingredients uniformly, producing a dry rock powder called the raw meal. Now the powder goes into a preheater. The temperature of the powder is 80 degrees Celsius upon entering. Within 40 seconds, it gets more than 10 times hotter. This begins the process of bonding the minerals together so that they'll later harden when hydrated with water. The preheater is equipped with what's called a flash calciner. In about five seconds, it removes 95% of the carbon dioxide and the powder through a chemical reaction. This isolates the lime, which is the most important element in cement. From there, the powder moves into a rotary kiln, a huge cylindrical furnace. It's set at an angle so that the powder moves from top to bottom a distance of 49 meters. The kiln rotates about two turns a minute to ensure the material travels through at the right speed. The burner's gas flame at the bottom reaches a scorching 16 to 1700 degrees Celsius. As the powder approaching it reaches the 1500 degree mark, it fuses into pieces about the size of marbles. These pieces are called clinker. As the clinker leaves the kiln, large fans cool it down to between 60 and 80 degrees Celsius. It's important to cool the clinker quickly in order to have quality cement. From here, the clinker goes to the storage area. The last stage of cement making is called finish grinding. They add some gypsum to the clinker. The precise amount varies with the type of cement they're making. Gypsum delays the cement setting time so that it can be worked for up to two hours before hardening. The cement mills are called ball mills because they contain metal balls, about 150 tons of them in the largest mill. As the mill rotates, the balls crush and grind the clinker and gypsum into a fine powder.
the video you just watched shows how Portland Smiths is produced. So when producing Portland Smiths, you first need two main ingredients or two main materials. One of the material is carcerous materials. So you need carcerous materials and these are materials that are rich in calcium oxide. These are materials that are rich in limestone, chalk and oyster shells. You also need a material called argillaceous materials. So these are materials that are rich in silica and alumni. These are materials that are rich in clay, shale, blast furnace and slag. So you need these two materials when you want to produce Portland smiths. So now we are going to take a look at the step for producing Portland smiths. So you need to follow this step by step. So the first step you need to follow when producing Portland smith is you first need to take your carcerous and argillaceous materials. You need to crush and grind these materials into a specific size. So that is the first step you need to take. Then the next step is after grinding the materials, you need to run this through a grinding mill. So this is how the grinding mill will look like. So you need to run those materials you crush. You need to run the materials through this grinding mill. So the next step is you need to run the materials through a cane. And this is going to melt the materials at a temperature of 2500 to 3000 degree Fahrenheit or 1400 to 1650 degree Fahrenheit, which is going to produce clinker. So inside the cane, the material will undergo a chemical reaction to produce a material called clinker. So the chemical reaction are tricassium silicate, dicassium silicate, tricassium aluminate, and tetricassium alumino ferrite. So you don't need to know the chemical reaction. You just need to follow the step. So this is the clinker. So this is an image of the clinker. So with the clinker, it is still a bit solid. So we have not yet gotten to the fine particle so we still have a solid particle we have not yet uh, gotten to a fine particle which is going to be the smith so the next step which is step four after obtaining the clinker the clinker is ground with gymsin so we are going to add gymsin to the clinker and the reason we add a gypsum to the clicker is to slow the setting time so if you take a look at the image here this is how gypsum will look like so we're going to add this gypsum to the clinker in order to slow the setting time. So after that, we are going to have a fine panda. So when we add the gypsum to the clinker and this regulates the setting time, we are then going to have a fine panda. So the fine panda is what we know as Portland Smith. So this is going to be the final Result. The final result when adding the gypsum to the clinker is going to be a Portland Smith. So this is it. So this is how Portland Smith is produced. So if you have if you have any question, let me know in the comment section below. And if you find this video helpful, do not hesitate to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red subscribe button and also share these videos to friends. Bye bye.